Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed and excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready? Let's call for that daily bread. What gives you right to call for your daily bread? And who are you calling for your daily bread from? From the Lord. Praise God. Now, if you're asking God for something, He will surely give you. So wait for Him to give you. Praise God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, then. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory. Expect a miracle. There's an excitement in my spirit today. Someone is receiving a miracle today. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Praise God. You are. You will receive a call today and it will be a good call. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. All right. So, yesterday I was talking to you about how to give your first fruits. Yes, how to give your first fruits. So, I was describing to you different scenarios of things that happen. Now, I may not cover everything practically because but, but then the truth is, if you have any confusion in your heart, reach out. Reach out. The wisdom of God is available. Praise God. You know, same also, uh, you, you, you are doing business. You know, I remember I told you last week, I said, if you enter a new city and that city blesses you. Now, for example, as preachers, right? Now, we travel to different places and... You, you get to a place and for some reason, someone gives to you. You see, now, this is the first time I'm coming to this city and someone is giving me something. That thing becomes your first fruit. Yes, it becomes your first fruit. Because sometimes people think preachers don't give offerings, preachers don't pay tithe. They will be broke. Trust me, trust me, except they have found another means and then you find those things um, you find those things today among preachers you find a pre i've seen i've seen um some preachers talk like this and when i hear it i just shake my head and like uh -uh. you're trying to you're trying to appear normal you're, you're, you're trying for people to i've heard preachers say i don't depend on i don't depend on uh, on the church for my sustenance i have my businesses that i'm doing have you heard preachers talk like that they are wrong very wrong i'm telling you very wrong those you see when they talk like that it god god detests it and see if they know they should go to the lord and ask for forgiveness because as they continue like that you know what Jesus said? Anyone who breaks one of these commandments and teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So they risk being calling the least in the kingdom of heaven. On earth, they might be big. But I'm telling you the truth. You see what they are trying to communicate? They are trying to communicate that. Uh, now, they, 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 they want to look honest and sincere. But I'm sorry, you, lo you lost that right long ago. Paul says, as false, yet true. People will think we are false. They, they, that, if you don't develop thick skin to that, they say, now say they will think, they say you are false. So if people think you are false, make sure you are not false. And only you and God know. See that now? I'm not saying you're false. So you say, eh, people are thinking I'm false. Only God. No, no. You know when you're false. You know it. So when, when preachers begin to tell you that I don't depend on church for my sustenance. Now, that part of it sounds good, sounds right. So who do you depend on? And guess what they now say? And this is where they spoil it. I have businesses that I do that sustain me. How do you say such a thing? And you represent God? No, you don't. You're representing your interests. 
How could you even? I am that brother, K. Akusi, Alamakune. As I say these things, my whole body is. You depend on your business? Sorry. Sorry, sir. Did God call you? Yes, he did. Hey, he pays me. He pay oh, oh, sorry. He pays you. How did he pay you? He pays you by giving you a business. And now you're depending on the business. Come on. Now, understand also, I want you to listen to me. Because sometimes they quote that Paul was a tent maker. Jesus was a carpenter. Who told you those things? How did you, where did you get from that Jesus was a carpenter? I have read my Bible. There is no place that it mentioned that Jesus was a carpenter. Joseph was the carpenter. So they referred to Jesus as Joseph the carpenter's son. Never said Jesus was doing carpentry business. So who was he working for? Oh boy. Imagine the chairs that Jesus must have made. And they could never. would have been going to Israel to see those chairs. Now, where did they get those ideas from? The serpent. Oh, Paul was a tent maker. Peter was a fisherman. Please, can you read your Bible? Just read it. And, and remove the serpent from your head. <laughs> Just read it. Paul referred to himself as a tent maker. Not to do business. But he saw it as an opportunity. He met these folks, Aquila and Priscilla. And then he, 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 he saw that they were tent makers. So they had this community of tent makers, you know. And then he understood the business because he, he was raised like that. That was his craft, okay? So now it was easy to communicate to those folks in their language. You see that now? So he used that to enter into them and win them. Win them to what? To the Lord Jesus. There is no place Paul told us that he made tent and sold the tent and made money. Brothers and sisters, please wear are they reading these things from? Paul was a tent maker. How, where did, I bind that serpent from your head. Peter was a fisherman. Okay. How many fishes did Peter sell? Didn't you read in scriptures that when, when Jesus, after Jesus was resurrected, the disciples one day were together and Peter said, Hey, guys, I'm going to fish. And some disciples said, Okay, I'm going with you. And they went fishing. Then the Lord showed up right there while they were fishing. He said, hey guys, have you caught any meat now? They didn't catch nothing. They caught nothing. Now these were men that loved Jesus. They've seen miracles. They've seen miracles before. And here they were, all night, catching nothing. And imagine the kind of thoughts that were going through their minds. And Jesus showed up again and said, Hey guys, do you have any meat? He said, No. Trust your net to the right side. And they did. And wow! They caught lots of fishes. And Jesus said, Bring from the fish. And then by the time they got to Jesus, they saw that Jesus was already roasting fish. Hey, you remember, John had to tell Peter, Peter, that's the Lord. And Peter heard it, he jumped into the river because he was naked. Now, after that whole, they finished eating, Jesus looked at Peter. I said, Peter, do you love me more than these ones? Peter said, yes, I do. He says, feed my sheep. Now, why would Jesus come to him? Because here's the deal. Because they caught nothing that day, guess what? Tomorrow, they would have gone again. And the next day, they would have gone again. And that was enough to distract Peter from the ministry that God has called him to. And this is what happens when a minister begins to face business and ministry. There will be that point where the distraction will come. And it will affect his message. I'm telling you the truth because now, if God opens the door of that business, he will begin to make more profits 
than profiting from ministry. Please, please listen to me. Are we in ministry to make profit? We'll talk about that. Now, so he begins to prosper in business than from the ministry. I'll explain to you what it means to profit in ministry. And soon enough, he will not have enough confidence to tell the people about the blessing of the Lord. He will not have it. Now, he can boast about what he's getting. He can boast that he bought a new house. He can boast that he bought a new car. But he cannot boast about the testimony of that car or that house. He can't. So soon, his message will begin to turn to inspiring people to go into that line of business that he is in. You see where the deception comes in now. See that? But you see, if this minister have profited in ministry, now what does it mean to profit in ministry? It means staying true to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, this, all these things shall be added unto you. Right? All these things shall be added unto you. That's what Jesus said. Paul spoke. He said, those that preach the gospel must live by the gospel. What did he mean, live by the gospel? Now, some have turned it to be, okay, so um, I'll be any salary from the church. That's not profiting from the ministry, brothers and sisters. No, it is not. Okay, if you want to earn salary from the church, how do you determine your salary? No, we will use uh, the world stand. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, like I'm like the CEO. So uh, this ministry, ah, ah, from where? The world. Be careful. God prescribed clearly how to take care of his ministers it is clear don't be afraid of it don't be shy of it god said to the priest you can study this in scriptures now we're not doing bible study because sometimes i'm a teacher of god's word yes but i'm not i'm, I'm not i don't concentrate on teaching bible there's a difference a teacher of God's word will take the mind of God and begin to expose it to you. A teacher of the Bible will take plenty of scriptures and begin to explain to you. But guess what? A teacher of God's word cannot be faulted with scriptures. Because he knows the scripture. He studied the scriptures. I can start listing out scriptures. I have, I have my notes on this. But then when I come to teach, I've been instructed by the Lord. You shall teach them as I tell you. I've been instructed by the Lord for that. So when I teach, I expect you to take your Bible and to begin to search. I always say this, at least try to disprove me with scriptures. I know one thing, if the Holy Spirit is in you, the same spirit that I'm speaking by, he will guide you through the scriptures to find the truth that I'm telling you. So I don't, I don't say, don't, don't look. I, I, no, 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 no. Please go study. God prescribed how the priests should be taken care of. And he told them why. You guys are to concentrate on things that have to do with the temple. And then God began to speak. You find this in, the, in Numbers chapter 18. Yeah, Numbers chapter 18. And then you find this in Leviticus. And also in Deuteronomy, God specifically told them that all the first fruits that the people give shall be yours. No, that brings us to another place. Okay, how do I give my first fruit? No, we've, yesterday I, I spoke to you about, you know, where, what do you call first fruits? So I told you, um, when you, you, you get a new job, your first pay is your first fruit, no matter what it is. The first thing that comes from that job is your first fruit, whether big or small. The first thing that comes is your first fruit. I know some people say, oh God, I pray they will pay me small first before they pay me my whole salary. Uh-huh, you're trying to play Kalo Kalo with God. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You see, God knows the principle and sometimes he's watching your heart. Why do we give faith? Because we are acknowledging that he's the one taking care of us. 
ah, so me, if my pay is one million a month, and then they, they pay me that one million, that whole one million is my first rate. It is. Ah, do you know what that is? You have been without job for three months. You didn't die. Praise <laughs> God. Okay, what if my pay is one million, and then they pay me, the first pay they pay me is 10,000. Uh, that 10,000 is your first fruit. So, uh, okay, so after I give that first thousand, when they now pay the rest, do I now pay first? No, sir. You've given God your first fruits. The next thing you can do is to tithe. We'll talk about tithe later. You see that now? So, no. so how do I give my first fruit? The first fruit belongs to the Lord. And when you follow the prescription in scriptures, it is the priest that have been commanded to receive the first fruits from the people. The priest? Yes, the priest. It's not an offering God takes. God says, I have given it to you. That is how you will be sustained. Now, when you study scriptures, you will notice that the priests don't receive tithe from the people. Yeah, I'll explain all that to you. Why? The first fruits, God clearly declared must be given to the priest so you see them function by these things in what you call the old testament and you remember one time elijah was in his house with some about 400 or so prophets of sons of the prophet they were together and there was no food and god sent somebody to bring his first fruits to them so a man brought first fruit of his harvest and he gave it to the man of God. And you remember the story, Elijah now told his servant, bring, serve it before the people. And the servant said, Asa, ah, it won't go round. Though. He said, serve it. But thus said the Lord, they will eat and it will remain. And the servant um, served it. They ate and it remained just like the man of God said. <laughs> Praise God. Now remember, this was Elijah. The man brought this first fruit to him. And when you study, um, I think um, he said the same thing in, he said the same thing in Ezekiel. I think Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 44, 44, 40, there about. He said, the first fruit shall be the priest. You shall give the priest the first of your dough. Then he gave the reason. Let me read that portion to you. Because I think for this, Ezekiel chapter 44 and verse 30. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It says, The best of all first fruit of all any kind, and every sacrifice of any kind from all your sacrifices shall be the priests. This is Ezekiel, a prophet, speaking. This is not a priest talking. Shall be the priest. Also, you shall give to the priest the first of your ground meal. I'm reading the New King James. To cause a blessing to rest on your house. Now, let me read the Old King James because there is a way he puts it there that it's very important you see. Old King James says, verse 30, Ezekiel 44, And the first of all the first fruits of all things, and every oblation of all, of all sort, of every sort of your oblation, shall be the priest. It shall be the priest. Ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough, that he, who, the priest, may cause the blessing to rest in thy house. Now, what does it mean that he will cause the blessing to rest in your house? Remember, first fruit has to do with honor. Right? Now, the priest stands as a representative to the Lord. And God specifically said, I have given them charge to eat of the first fruit. Now, in those days, there are sacrifices you burn. You burn it completely, it turns to ashes. There are sacrifices you burn and then the Levites and the priests take a portion of those sacrifices. You study Leviticus, you'll see all these things. But then he says, the priests, I have given them charge to take the first fruit. Now he says, when you give the first fruit, 
it is a job of the priest to cause the blessing of God to rest in your house. Now, here is how fresh fruit works. I told you, number one, you're reporting to the Lord that you have entered that land or that job or that business and you have seen prospects. You have seen a blessing. You have seen a harvest. That's what you are doing. Now, when you bring it to the priests, now the priest today refers to the man of God that God has placed over your life. Now, some people say, no, you know, I, don't, I don't believe in all those things that having a man of God, everybody is connected in this kingdom. Brothers and sisters, everyone is connected. Yes. So now, you take of that first fruit and then you give it to your priests. If you don't have one whom God has placed, then you're in trouble. You need to seek the Lord. Yes, you need to seek the Lord. Because these things are things that the Spirit of God directs. Oh dear God, Jesus, my time is suddenly up. How did time go so fast? Praise God. I'll have to stop you. I'll continue from these very points tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.